If even the makers of React are feeling burnt out with explaining new concepts to the community, something must be seriously wrong. Let's take a look at what's wrong and certainly what is not wrong. There's a very important distinction we need to make when it comes to the new Next.js and also React versions. Look, in 2023, I'm convinced that Next.js is along with Nuxt and Svelte, one of the best choices you have when it comes to building complex interactive web apps with authentication, with API routes, with everything inside of it, and at last also be performant. The app router is really fast moving, but that does not mean it's not suitable for production because we've got to differentiate between Canary React and Experimental React. What's experimental in Next.js, for example, if you want to opt in to that, it's only opt in. You can, things like server actions, those are experimental. What the app router is or uses is Canary React. Those features are not experimental. They have been tested by the company behind React, that is Meta. You can use them in production, they're not experimental. That's what the app router is, right? It's Canary React. For example, server components that have been introduced with the app router are Canary React, while server actions, they are not recommended for production for this exact reason, are experimental. And what that means in practice is when the app router was released as stable, that does not mean there are no bugs in the app router. Those always get identified with adoption and as people are reporting them. Instead, what it means is the core API of the app router is done. It's going to be mainly unchanged. There's not going to be a necessity for you to rewrite your app because of any major breaking changes that happen during version bumps. That's what people are claiming, but that is not at all the case. Where critique is far more appropriate is in terms of performance of the new app router. For example, in local iteration, people are complaining it takes really long when you compare it with super fast tools like Vite, for example. And you know what? They're totally right. It is very slow. And also the production builds take long in the new app router. And not only is the Vercel team addressing that performance issue head on at the moment with their new post, but also developer education. React at its core has always been a very innovative framework. For example, when we moved from class components to hooks, that was a massive breaking change, arguably the worst, worst one React ever had. And this new shift we're experiencing in the new server client architecture with React server components is arguably an even more multifaceted change that they're introducing now. And what that brings with it is a lot of shift in how we code. When do I use client components? When do I use server components? What do they even do? Those questions have already been answered by the Next.js team. But what you need to understand is that using client components is not a de-optimization of your code. It's important to understand, if you look at the history of React and Next.js, in fact, it is the standard. Components were always rendered, hydrated on the client side. Even though server components are the default, you don't have to use them in your app whatsoever, but they do bring you performance benefits. So people arguing the introduction of React server components is there to boost their sales sales because now you have to deploy on their platform to benefit from their server. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. The big question this all leads to is, wasn't the web easier 10 years ago, five years ago, when all these changes weren't introduced, there was one client architecture you'd build your app in. Was it easier in how we understand and program the web as developers? And the answer is yes, it was. But also understand why that is the case. The problems we were facing back then in architectural questions, how do I conceptually design my app with APIs and with front end and how that plays together? Where do I deploy and so on? It was easier. React server components and their implementation in Next.js 13 are not meant for simple web apps. You can use Svelte, you can use Astro, you can use HTML, CSS and JavaScript for those if you want. Using these tools to build your blog, your simple web app, your landing page is like using a tank to shoot at a fly in your kitchen. It'll destroy everything around you and you might even reach your goal, but in a very inefficient manner. I just personally feel like that's not what they're meant for. They're tools that are faster to achieve just that. But for highly complex, highly interactive web apps that are facing millions of users and need to handle large scale data, like OpenAI, ChatGPT uses Next.js. For example, their landing page uses Nuxt. These tools, these advanced meta frameworks on top of Vue, on top of React, 
are meant for these highly interactive use cases. So as long as these new introductions into the React ecosystem, like server components, server actions, and so on, and everything that might come in the following months and years, as long as these introductions serve their purpose of making large scale, highly complex apps easier to build and disregarding the changes in how you need to deploy those, they serve their purpose. So yeah, this video was important for me to make. I feel like it's really easy to shit on the innovative approach of new frameworks. But I think as long as they're making it easier for developers who appreciate the intent behind those features, as long as those developers have an easier, better, faster time building the apps they want, I think they're doing a great job. With that said, feel free to agree in the comments, feel free to roast my opinion, everything is fine. And then I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.